In our Date Road to Crisis episode, the theater commander asked for a Denovian Strategic Force update and an A2AD update. In order to do this, we as analysts need to revisit JIPO Step 3, define the threat. The start point to this should almost always be confirm the threat composition. Dun, 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 dun. Military variable selected. JIPO Step 3, enabled, launching, or BAT. Hello and welcome. I'm your host, and this is 35 Fox Talks. For this episode, we're going to tackle two learning objectives. The first is to start learning how to read orders of battle. The second is to understand what a strategic force is within date and how that crosswalks to real-world organizations. To do this, we're going to spend a lot of time on the Tradoc Odin website, specifically the Denovian military page and the Denovian force structure page. To start, we will need to define the difference between four terms. They are Table of Organization and Equipment, TOW, Modified Table of Organization and Equipment, MTO, Order of Battle, called ORBAT, or OOB, or OB, and Organizational Chart, Org Chart. The difference between a TOW and MTO is almost meaningless. The lone exception is what they mean to U.S. Force Modernization and Force Management Personnel. But we're not talking about that, so we're going to greatly simplify what their differences are. First, a visual. Go to the Denovian Force Structure page and select a unit. For this vignette, we'll choose 4211 Motorized Infantry Brigade. You can either click on the download arrow in the upper right, or just click on the icon itself to see the different views of the unit's TOW slash MTOW. In short, TOWs and MTOWs are spreadsheets that show what subordinate units exist within a parent unit how many soldiers are supposed to be in that unit, the rank structure of the soldiers in the unit, the job skills of the soldiers, the equipment that each soldier is supposed to have, and which soldiers man what piece of equipment. The TOW is what each generic unit type, Cybercell, Infantry Company, Aviation Battalion, Artillery Brigade, Motorized Infantry Division, is designed to look like and have, while an MTOW reflects what each specific unit actually has and how they are actually structured, hence the modified portion of MTO. Order of battle charts are greatly simplified graphic representations of specific things from MTOs. They show hierarchy, command relationships, unit types, and key combat capabilities and or weapon systems of each depicted formation. What you see on Odin is the simplest form of an ORBAT chart. What you see now are slightly more complex ORBAT charts. What you see now is how not to make an ORBAT chart. This person thought the whole MTO needed to be on their ORBAT chart, making it overwhelming and confusing. Organizational charts are typically used for the highest levels of command. They simply show hierarchy and function. They don't provide information on capabilities, weapon systems, manpower, or really much of anything else. Returning to our requirement to update the theater commander on the status of Denovian strategic forces, we find ourselves looking at the Denovian order of battle. Now, if we follow a logical thought process, when we look at this, we should expect to see a strategic force drop-down. Instead, we find only ground, air, and naval commands. This brings up a great teaching moment. Orbats are typically built to communicate one of two force structures. They are the administrative force structures that communicate oversight of train, man, equip efforts, and operational force structures that communicate how forces are organized to handle specific operational problems. Remember, we discussed how the U.S. military does this in our U.S. military force structure videos. Within date, the Denovian Orbet is built in the operational force structure construct, meaning that most of the strategic force's traditional combat power capability is tasked to the Denovian military districts, which have in turn tasked them to the Army, Navy, or Air Force contingent of that military district. If it helps you, you can draw these parallels. The Denovian Strategic Force Command is similar in concept to U.S. STRATCOM, U.S. CYBERCOM, and the U.S. Space Force being combined into one mega functional component command. Denovian military districts are similar in concept to U.S. Geographic Combatant Commands in that they are geographic joint military commands organized to rapidly transition from peace to war against anticipated threats. 
This means the Denovian Army, Navy, Air Force, Strategic Force, and Special Purpose Force all provide capabilities to the military districts for theater strategic and operational use. However, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Strategic Force, and Special Purpose Force also keep small contingents under their direct control to conduct national strategic missions. You know, things like nuclear forces. For anyone who thinks this is a exercisism, please remember date replicates reality for training. What we just discussed is how the militaries of great powers operate across the world. This is why learning how to read these charts is critical. So going back to the start of all of this, when we look at the Strategic Force Organizational chart, we see that it administratively oversees these subordinate commands of missile, space, infowar, strategic communications, and military intelligence. As the national coordinating authority for the actions of those commands, the Strategic Force Commander has evidently assigned most of those units to military districts, while retaining a few capabilities to support national strategic requirements. Because in our scenario, we are mostly concerned with the Southern Military District, we need to look there. Now, here is some honest feedback to Tradox, Date, Odin team. Please make the Orbat chart aligned to the Military Districts, because your current force structure page makes crosswalking this less than intuitive. That being said, we know that the Southern Army makes up the nucleus of the Southern Military District, so we can open that up, and applying our knowledge of symbology, we can see that, sure enough, there's a SPF Brigade, a Military Intelligence Command, a Theater Surface-to-Surface -surface Missile Brigade. Then, when we open the MI Command, we see there is Electronic Warfare, Recon, UAVs, Communications, and Infowar, which is a combination of Cyber, Propaganda, and Electronic Attack. Comparing all of that against the Strategic Force Org Chart, we can see that we have accounted for the assets from every command other than Space Command. And cutting to the chase on that one, Space Command is highly centralized at the national level, so nothing is tasked out from that command to any military district. Now when we open the Air Force and Naval Command icons, we don't get the same clean breakdown we got with the Southern Army. Cutting to the chase again, when you flush all of this out, you come to understand the Army has oversight of most assets. The Air Force and Navy are simply given some enablers to assist in anti-access area denial capabilities and missions, A2AD. This gives us another teachable moment. There is a difference between strategic force and forces that support national strategic missions. Many real-world countries do what Denovia replicates. They consolidate military capabilities that are vital to the success of national interests or whose use has immediate repercussions on a national, international level, under headquarters elements called strategic commands, strategic forces, strategic support forces, etc. However, these are not the only units that operate at the strategic level. There are many Army, Navy, and Air Force units that persistently execute strategic missions, such as those units conducting A2AD missions like 1st Air Defense Command, 73rd Field Artillery Command, and 7th Integrated Fires Command, or units that have missions to reinforce combat actions of strategic importance, like guards units or the National Air Division. As a side note, we will explain A2AD in our September Episode 3-2 video, while the concept of combat unit employment for a strategic interest will be explained in a slew of future COA development videos. Now, the last topic we want to discuss is all of these lines linking units together. As an analyst, you must understand these lines cover up what the command relationship, or COMREL, is between units. We will make a video specifically for this topic down the road, but in the meantime, please understand and use these materials on the screen to educate yourself on terms of reference and their meaning, because we must understand what these words mean to know how the enemy fights. Example, the Denovian 386th SSM Brigade, of the Strategic Force Missile Command is dedicated U.S. equivalent OPCON direct support to the Southern Army, with the exception of the 3862 Medium Range Ballistic Missile Battalion, which is retained in a supporting relationship, U.S. equivalent TACON General Support Reinforcing. These charts and their lines are the beginning of the story, but they are not the full story, and they were never meant to be. That is what you are paid for as an analyst. They are your tools, not your end state. In our next video, we weigh in on the conventional versus irregular warfare debate. Until then, thanks for watching, take care, and God bless.